This is the Alienware M15 R2 gaming laptop. And yeah, I know the R3 was just announced, but it took me a long time to get my hands on it, so here we go. The M15 has a magnesium alloy build. Overall, it feels quite sturdy. The edges are pretty smooth, but the corners do feel kind of sharp, but only if you rub up against them like this. Overall, not really a problem though during normal use. There's only minor chassis flex when pushing down hard. Overall, it's pretty sturdy. The screen does bend a bit more than I'd like, but that's probably just due to the hinge running along the middle and not being connected at the corners. Now the M15 does come in white or black, and I've obviously got the white one here. Uh, there is a little kind of yellowed patch near the left of my touchpad here. This is an older model now, so it's been around for about a year. So I guess with the white, that's probably something to be aware of. It doesn't seem like it's going to hold up too well in terms of the areas where you're constantly rubbing your hands. Uh, hopefully I'd expect the dark model to be a bit better in that regard. Perhaps the most interesting thing about the M15 is just the RGB lighting. As you can see, it goes all around the back in this ring. The Alienware logo here lights up as well. The keyboard is all RGB too. Uh, it's a lot of customization you can do. I mean, if you don't like RGB, you can of course turn it off, but that's definitely one of the most unique parts of this laptop. So the 15.6 inch screen in my model is 1080p, although it is also available with the 4K version. It's available with 60 hertz, but I've got the 240 hertz model here. Now Alienware say that it's got a seven millisecond response time, but I tested it and well, it was 6.7 milliseconds. So I guess they're pretty accurate there. Mine was actually slightly better. Overall, the color gamut was pretty good. The brightness was about average and yeah, it looks pretty decent overall. The keyboard is very tactile to type with. Um, I did have some problems when I first started using it. It kind of felt like the whole keyboard was just tilted over to the right a little. I got used to it after a couple of days, but yeah, just something to note, it felt a bit different to begin with. The precision touchpad worked all right. I did have quite a serious issue with it though. Basically, two finger scrolling just almost never worked at all for me. Now doing a search on the internet for this, it looks like I'm not alone in this problem. Apparently it's a problem with the Toby eye tracking software and it, apparently it's as simple as just disabling it, but I tried to do that and I had all sorts of errors with the software. So I was never really able to get two finger scrolling working. And if that's the default, honestly, I think that's just not good enough. It's a pretty crap experience out of the box and I'm clearly not alone in it as there are other people discussing this online. Getting inside the M15 was very easy, but there's no real need to. The only thing you can really get to is the two M.2 slots. Unfortunately, the Wi-Fi and memory are soldered to the motherboard, so you'll need to buy it in the configuration that you need out of the box as these things cannot be upgraded later. This is definitely a downside with the M15, just those lack of upgrade options. I mean, you could argue it's a thinner machine. At the thickest point, it's around two centimeters, but at the same time, other options that are similar thickness, like MSI's GS66, don't have these limitations. They let you get in and upgrade the Wi-Fi and RAM, no problem. So yeah, it'd be nice if this is something that they address in a future model, as upgradability is pretty important. These devices cost a lot of money and simple upgrades let you get more life out of them. The 76 watt hour battery was okay, not amazing. The result in gaming was well below average and outside of gaming, it was all right. So the IO is overall pretty decent. This side just has two USB type A ports and the air exhaust. This one's got the 2.5 gigabit ethernet and another type A port and 3.5 millimeter headphone jack. Otherwise, all the rest is over on the back. So we've got quite a few DisplayPort options. So there's mini DisplayPort, HDMI, and the Type-C port also supports DisplayPort as well. So technically it might be possible to do up to three monitors. I haven't tested that though. Don't have three monitors at the moment. Uh, that Type-C port is also Thunderbolt, but if you're doing external graphics enclosure, you can also use the Alienware graphics amplifier with this port. And this will actually perform faster than Thunderbolt because it's a direct connection via PCIe. So there's no, well not no, but there's less of a delay compared to Thunderbolt. So it's a bit better, but it does mean you need Alienware's graphics amplifier graphics enclosure in order to use that one. There are a few performance modes to change fan speed, but overall there's not that much customization. In typical Alienware fashion, they seem to prioritize performance over thermals. And I mean, it's, it's, it's always gonna be a trade-off at the end of the day. And if that's what they wanna do, then fair enough. Look, the performance here is pretty good, but just be prepared for those higher thermals. I was getting 100 degrees Celsius thermal throttling on the CPU in some games and under heavy workloads. And that's just the way the M15 is. It's a hot machine because it's on the thinner side and they decide to turn up those power limits to give you that boost in performance. Personally, I think 100 is a bit high. I don't really feel comfortable running at 100 degrees just 
all the time when you're playing a game or something like that. A lot of other laptops tend to limit this to say 90 degrees, which I think is a bit more reasonable. 100 is definitely a bit up there. Yeah, the CPU performance is good. It gives me one of the best Cinebench results I've ever had from an i7-9750H laptop due to those higher power limits. I don't think you can notice it now, but I can hear it at the moment. There is some extremely subtle coil whine. However, once the fans kick in, once you're doing any kind of task, it's much less noticeable and really not a problem. So in typical Alienware fashion, this thing comes with quite a price premium. With these specs we're looking at here, it's 2,500 US dollars. Now this is one of the highest end models available. We've got the 2080 Max-Q graphics after all, i7 CPU, you can get the 8 core i9 I think for a thousand dollars more. In my opinion that's definitely not worth it if you're just gaming. The amount of performance improvement you're going to get in most games from the small extra clock speed boost and the two extra cores over six in most games, not worth a thousand dollars. If you got a lot of money or maybe if time is money and you really need the multi-core performance, there might be an argument for it there, but still, I think at that point, you, there's probably better options for your money. That said, there are also other configurations for less money. You can check the links in the description for updated prices. So at the end of the day, personally, I don't think the Alienware M15 R2 is really worth it. It costs a fair bit of money, and there are just, there's more problems than most other laptops out there. Like the software issues with the two finger scrolling, that's a bit annoying. Apparently you can fix it, though I wasn't able to get that working. I had updates with the Alienware update software. I mean, I, it said it was updating and I left it running overnight, didn't complete, couldn't cancel it, turned it off, tried to redo the updates again, didn't work either. Seems like there's just quite a few uh, software bugs, and that's something I've noted with Alienware laptops in the past as well, which is unfortunate. As mentioned, this white model does seem to yellow over time. I've got this yellow patch next to the touchpad, uh, but I would expect this to be less of an issue with the dark model. Due to being a thinner machine, it does run hot, and Alienware have capped the CPU at 100 degrees, I guess to give you best performance. But as a result, yeah, it does run pretty hot. The battery life was okay. During gaming, it was lower than most other laptops though, but generally I don't really recommend playing on battery power anyway, as it's just not a good experience in most cases. You get lower frame rates and it's just not great. But yeah, battery life, eh. And finally, the soldered RAM and Wi-Fi is just, it's just, it's just not good. There are other laptops this size, perhaps a little thinner, that give us those upgradability options. And as discussed, it's a very expensive machine and you want something like that to last. So being able to upgrade RAM or even Wi-Fi when say Wi-Fi 7 or whatever comes out, that would just be nice to be able to, you know, get some extra life out of it. But it's just not something you can do with the M15 R2. You'll be stuck with whatever you buy it with, with your only option of updating the SSDs. So pretty much if you want something that looks cool and unique with the RGB lighting, well, yeah, the M15 R2 is definitely unique. There's not really many other machines I can think of that look like this. But yeah, at the same time, I think there's just too many negatives for the price and it's not a machine that I would personally recommend. Anyway, let me know what you thought of the Alienware M15 R2 down in the comments. And if you're new to the channel, then get subscribed for future videos like this one.